what would you say is probably the biggest challenge that dealers are coming across right now in the industry? Compliance and education. Um, and they can't have the compliance without the education. Um, so Jennifer, thank you for joining me today. Um, you know, uh, we are working to try and make sure that all of our dealers uh, understand what is uh, going on and kind of the environment uh, from technology, from service providers, and, and just all the different kind of stuff that's out there. And so what we're doing right now is we are uh, interviewing people like yourself who are part of the industry um, that can add some additional layers of understanding basically to, to what's going on. Um, and so with that, I would appreciate if you just kind of um, tell me a little bit about yourself, uh, who you are, and, and who you work for. Okay. Uh, my name is Jennifer Finley. I am the Senior Account Manager at Florida Auto Tag Agencies. Florida Auto Tag Agencies um, has a couple of divisions. One of them is a processing agency, which would be Orange Auto Tag Agency. They basically do the work of the DMV. Um, so anything that would be done at a tax collector's office, submitting titles, uh, and registrations, lease documents, uh, marine documents, whatever it is to um, get finalized with the state. So Orange Auto Tag Agency will, will grade and process those documents um, and it will be finalized at that point. Okay, excellent. And so what would you say really um, sets Florida Auto Tag Agencies apart from, uh, from other private agencies in the state? There's actually many things that sets, uh, <laughs> sets us apart. Um, first of all, like I said, we have, uh, we have a, a few different things going on as far as uh, a solution mm -hmm. process. Uh, so Orange Auto Tag Agency is the processing agency. Uh, we also have Fast Title that um, can actually complete the paperwork. So kind of like a title clerking service? Like a title clerking service, uh, which comes in really handy for not only the larger dealerships who may get backed up, from having someone on vacation or being uh, low staff or just an extra extra volume. Uh, it's not a contract-based um, or subscription-based service, uh, so it can be piecework. Um, so it works really well for the larger dealerships as well as the small dealerships that um, are a one or two-man operation that just don't want to take that one person you know, outside of the office. It's a huge time suck, basically, right, to right. kind of have somebody do that. Yeah. So we have that. Um, so we have all these different ways that, that we can provide solutions. Um, marine dealers have recently become a, a big deal. Mm -hmm. um, they process... Because there's nobody else, I think, that uh, can offer the solution that, that, uh, that, no. that they do. Yeah. They, they do a lot of transactions that are different from vehicle or truck or tw equipment uh, transactions. And we uh, have, have successfully overcome... Uh, a lot of obstacles recently for a, a few different marine dealers um, that, that made it able and made it easier for them to process those transactions without a problem. I gotcha. Okay. Um, so as far as the benefits, you know, you have the fact that we, um, as an agency management team, as well as um, our clerks, are very dedicated to making it happen, finding a way to make it happen. One of the other uh, very large benefits is all of our dealers, whatever type of dealer they are, they have a dedicated account manager. Yeah. They have someone, their direct line, that they can call and say, I don't know what to do about this, or I have this problem, or what am I going to do? And, and they have that person, whether it's myself or one of the other account managers, um, that will get on the ball and figure out how to make it happen. Um, so... Uh, you know, you've got such a, a great background and, and history of uh, working in the dealership industry and the automobile industry. Um, so since you've been with, uh, with Florida Auto Tag Agencies, what would you say is probably the biggest challenge that dealers are coming across right now in the industry? From my point of view, what I see being their largest struggle um, is compliance. Yeah. And being compliance and education. Um, and they can't have the compliance without the education. The one piece of advice I would give to a dealer uh, is to be involved. Be involved in an association. There are many out there. Uh, we have a lot of independent dealers. Mm -hmm. uh, so obviously my, my go-to, uh, my recommendation for the independent dealers would be 
uh, FIADA, which stands for Florida Independent Auto Dealers Association. Okay. Uh, they're a 40-year association. They, they have a very, very strong network. Um, they have a lot of events that happen, um, a lot of networking, so you can actually be involved with other dealers. To be in a situation uh, where you're surrounded with people who are as passionate about the business as you are is fun. It's just fun. <laughs> um, and you know, people think, oh, convention, is that we're having drinks and we're partying. No, there's really a lot of work that goes on. You can also get exposed to a lot of uh, vendors or um, other uh, industry kind of related um, companies Correct. at the convention. Um, that's where we've met a lot of our partners uh, um, is at, uh, at a convention. Um, and then the town halls are always uh, um, pretty fascinating. Can you talk about maybe um, uh, what your experience has been at a, at a town hall and, and what those are? At a regular town hall meeting, you would get together. Um, they always feed you free lunch, which is great. Love free food. Um, and it's, uh, it's, it's very informative. They'll have a variety of uh, of current vendors and new vendors that will say a little bit about the industry and and things that are changing. Um, they'll always have a um, uh, a legal update from their uh, attorney and That's record. Rob uh, Sickles, I believe. Rob Sickles. Yeah. Um, he specializes in in uh, car dealers, representing car dealers. Yeah. Um, so he always uh, he always has some interesting stories. And I think one of the benefits of being a member is that you can actually call Rob and ask him questions um, if, you, if you get yourself into a little bit of a pickle. Yes. So, okay. Yes. They also have legislative updates, mm -hmm. um, different laws and rules and things that we're trying to make happen yeah, as the, an association. Yeah, because the post scholarship just came in recently. Um, there was a lot of questions about that. Yeah. Everybody was confused. Um, I think that really cleared things up on this last meeting, which was actually this past week. Right, and it also helped that they actually had somebody from the Hope Scholarship organization there to answer questions as well. Right. So right. That, was, that was pretty good. So Jennifer, I want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the changes that um, that are really coming on the dealer industry. Um, you know, we hear we hear now about technology and all of that, and there's certainly a ton of technology um, uh, coming into the dealership industry. Everything from social media um, to DMSs, dealer management systems, to EFS, electronic filing systems, and um, so can you talk a little bit about uh, about um, you know what those are uh, and and how you think that that's going to be changing the industry moving forward. Okay. No, it's a lot. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, dealer management software, in my eyes, is not an option. To not have it. To not have it, yeah. To not. That, and that's, know, that's, that's no say, matter the size it. of your dealership. No matter the size of your dealership. So it, even if you're moving 10, 10 units a month or 1,000 right. units a month, everybody in between, they should have a dealer. It's, it's a given. Um, Accounting-wise, sales tax-wise, compliance-wise, um, you know, the, the government, the Attorney General, the Trade Commission, every, every one of those governing agencies makes it very difficult for car dealers yeah. to, to stay in compliance. So that is definitely a must. You, know, you talked earlier a lot about compliance, and that's kind of one of dealers' um, biggest kind of pain points. Mm -hmm. And so a DMS will really help solve or at least uh, help um, right. in a lot, in a lot you of ways. Would, you would literally have to have a full-time employee if you did not have a DMS, to do nothing but keep up with making sure you have the right forms, that they've been updated, that that you are in compliance with all of the different governing agencies. So the DMS is really important because it's a it's a it is a subscription mm -hmm. product. Yeah. Um, online, you know, it's it's a web based product, but you know, once a month or once every two months they're updating that. So if there's a, a line that changes uh, legally in one of your forms, it's going to be updated and you're not going to... And, and those prices, depending about. on, you know, which which company you go with can range from um, $100, $200 a month up, upwards. Correct. Um, and I'm certain, you know, whichever vendor they pick will help, you know, customize basically mm -hmm. the solution for, for exactly. what Exactly. There's for. something for every every size of business. Okay. Um, some will be compatible with, with other... Um, different types of programs that they need. Okay. Some won't. But they're, no matter what size your dealership is, you can find something you that would be a good fit and, and fit into your budget. Okay. Um, uh, you know, 
you talked about kind of the, the government agencies and oversight and all that. Um, uh, so uh, are there penalties? There, there are penalties, right, that, that if you don't follow, you know, these thousand different rules that exist, mm -hmm. um, each one of them come with their own kind of set of penalties. Can you talk a little bit about uh, um, what you've seen some dealerships experience by not following um, in, in compliance? Well, just as a, as a general example, um, there are a variety of rules that, um, that can be broken. Let's say, um, are you familiar with uh, what they call the buyer's guide? The buyer's guide, yes. Yeah. So that's the document basically that goes on the, uh, the window, or is that the one that is handed to the customer? It goes on the window. Okay. Um, it can be side window, or it can hang on the, uh, the rear view mirror. The Attorney General says it has to be in a place where both sides of it can be seen. It's a two-sided form. Okay. Um, so, for example, if you uh, were to get basically caught without one of those in one of your vehicles that is on your lot in a display space, not So, like, if I drive or, by a dealership and I see that they've, like, maybe written in magic marker, you know, the price of the vehicle and there's nothing else on display that dealer would be out of compliance. Exactly. Okay. So that would mean a variety of, of fines, actually. You will get fined from uh, the Attorney General. You'll get another fine from the Trade Commission as well as the DMV. Holy crap. Right. And those fines are, are they're, they're staggering. They could easily put a small uh, dealership out of business. You're talking thousands of dollars. Thousands, multiple thousands. Per, per occurrence. Wow. So Jennifer, you know, you talked about compliance with other with other systems, kind of that exist within the the dealership office. Um, so I know that EFS is uh, um, another one of those kind of technologies. Can you talk a little bit about what EFS is? EFS is stands for Electronic Filing System. Because yay for acronyms. Right. <laughs> we have a lot of them in this business. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. As opposed to way back a million years ago when I got into the business and everything was done in paper form. So like five years ago. Yeah, right. <laughs> As a matter of fact, it was so long ago that the, the DMS systems were not really in place. We were handwriting contracts. Oh, that wow. was like... So as opposed to the olden days, um, now dealers have the ability to submit their title work electronically, which means their paperwork is still having to be filled out. However... With the exception, really, of the title having to be written on, mm -hmm. their DMS or their dealer management software is printing out the necessary documents. And some of the EFS providers, they actually will fill out that paperwork uh, for Correct. them as well. Okay. So they have an option where they want to print it out. Um, and, and that part of it stays the same. They will still have to hand, hand fill out the title. Mm -hmm. um, however, as opposed to gathering those documents uh, within a 30-day window after the sale and physically either mailing them or driving in them into a local office. And then waiting in line and for waiting in line, anywhere from five minutes to five hours. yeah, Or dropping it off and waiting five days to or 15 days. Or only being days. able to take two pieces at a time or et cetera, et cetera, right, et cetera. Right. Yeah. So all of that um, is has gone to the wayside. So they can take those documents that would normally go um, in physical form mm -hmm. and they can scan them into their vendor. Okay. Um, some dealers have some confusion about how that works, but... Basically, it's a, it's a three-part system. You have your dealer, you have your vendor, which you do the EFS through, mm -hmm. and then you have the processing agency, which in our case would be Orange Auto. Okay, agency. and so we don't, we don't really compete um, with the, the vendor side of things, and no. we, we work pretty closely with all of them. All, all three components are, are all linked together. Right. So the dealer does the work, sells the car, gets the paperwork ready, sends it through the vendor, so it filters through the vendor to make sure everything is good and then comes to our agency for processing and finalization with the state. Part of the convenience of doing it that way, um, and, and this again goes for the larger dealerships down to the small ones, is EFS documents can be submitted 24 hours a day. Okay. And that is something that I really love because I've seen, you know, I get calls from these dealers we don't, there's not enough hours in the day. We can't do it all. And so these guys are staying at, you know, at their dealerships till 10 o'clock at night to sell cars. They're not going to sit down at 1030 and, it, you know, and, and finish this up and then say, oh, I have to be in the office by 8 o'clock because I have to drive these documents. To the tax collector's office. So these documents can be submitted 
24 hours a day. You know, if they send it in at 1 o'clock in the morning, it will be there for these clerks when we open. Yep. And process. so they're not, they're not restricted by hours of an office I for gotcha. EFS. And, and the weekends as well. So if they wanted to do their paperwork on the weekends... That's a big selling be, point for these guys. In the queue first thing on Monday morning. All right, excellent. Anything to, you know, to, to make things a little easier. So, you know, Jennifer, you've talked a lot about uh, um, education and the importance of continuing to kind of stay on top of things. And, uh, and I actually completely agree. And that's why we're doing these videos. That's why we're, you know, making sure that we're communicating out to our customer base, you know, all of the stuff that is, uh, that is out there. Because um, if you don't know what's going on, it's just going to walk right past you. Um, right. And so uh, it makes the best sense for us, for our dealers to succeed. Um, the longer that they stay in business, obviously, the better the better that we're doing. And the more successful that they are, the more successful f that we are. And so that's why we're really taking this opportunity to make sure that they have all those resources, that they have those tools, they have those education pieces. Um, because like you said, it's, it's just absolutely so critical um, for them to be able to do, to do their business. But also, it's a good exercise exercise for us to make sure that we continue to run a, a solid business. Mm -hmm. So um, I 100% agree with you on that. Absolutely. Well, well, Jennifer, um, you know, was there was there anything else that you that you you know wanted to share with us today? Any any topic or anything that you wanted to touch on? You know me, I'm I'm really big on education. Yeah. Um, I would say, you know. If I could, if I could have a group of dealers together, and you know, I taught the uh, the pre licensing class for new dealers. Um, I felt really strongly about that. Uh, I love teaching that class, and about doing that in person as well. Right in person, um, and and every time I had a class, I would tell those guys, "Don't stop." Right. Don't stop doing this. Um, you know, they, in the state of Florida, they'll need to do, uh, education every two years. Mm -hmm. And I suggested to all of my students, please come back in person at least that first time. Right. And don't let it stop there. You know, there's so many different kinds of trainings, um, compliance trainings, title trainings, just basic HR, you name it, whatever surrounds their dealership. And to put a person, um, in charge of that. You know, have somebody at your dealership that can, uh, that can take these classes and come home and share it with the team. It, it's going to keep you above board. It's going to keep you safe and in compliance. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, um, so thank you for, for taking the time um, to, to talk with us today. Um, we're going to do a number of interviews with uh, some of the... Um, the topics and the companies that, that we've kind of talked about, uh, everything from DMS systems to EFS providers um, and, and a lot of other companies that are related to the industry, um, including the president of the Florida Independent Automobile Dealers Association, Brad. Um, and so, uh, so over the next uh, you know, couple of weeks, uh, you should see uh, some really helpful information uh, that will help make sure that your dealership uh, has all the tools and resources that it needs to succeed.